Ladies and gentlemen, Switch owners and Switch hopefuls, welcome to the greatest show in this galaxy. It's Comet Force number 21. I'm your host, Zach. I've got Jake and Gabe here. The whole Switch Force uh, community has united once again for another epic show where we go over your comments, your thoughts, your opinions, your battles, and your stories. Gabe and Jake, give me a, a little recap of your week. I saw Spider-Man. I, That's very good. I don't want any spoilers, please. Uh, I, the, Spider-Man is in it. Dang it. Oh, darn. If you're expecting Gabe. this to be the first Spider-Man movie without Spider-Man in it, you are wrong. Uh, but no, How not... many times is Andrew Garfield on screen? None. Uh, I'll, I'll, what about Electro? I'll give you my rating. You ask how many uh, popcorns out of five. I'll, yes. I'll give it like a good three and a half, maybe four popcorns out of five on a good day. But not three and a half. I'll go three and a half popcorn. I like it. Okay. I, I expected more than that. No. Well, you know, I'm, I'm tired of these superhero movies. You know this. All right. Well, I will. I am seeing it later today. Yeah. So at some point in a future Switch Force video, I will mention how many bags of popcorn I give it. Okay. But in the meantime, we are going to turn all of our popcorn over to you guys because it is this show is about you. It's about me. And no, it's not about you, Gabe. So, it's about, well, it's about them. It's, it's sometimes about me. <laughs> I mean, that's not about you. This week, actually, surprisingly, not not much about you. That's, it's yeah. it's just mostly about the Switch and mostly about Nintendo. And it starts off with C six five two saying, "I want a Game Boy Advance classic." And I think this is beautiful. I think this is the next area that Nintendo should dip their uh, very money hungry toes into, and they should get on this portable classic so, kick. So basically, it'd be a Game Boy Micro, but with games built in. Yes, but it would be like. More like a game and watch, I guess. But then why? You would... know how those came with like a preloaded game. Yeah. Well, I guess my question then becomes, why wouldn't they just start with the Game Boy first and have the Game Boy Advance Classic be like a few years from now? Hmm. They. Yeah. I guess they could. It'd have to be. I think it'd have to be Game Boy Color. I don't know that people would get behind like OG black and white green dude, dude, Game Boy you, games. I think you are like vastly underestimating the power of nostalgia. Okay. How much would you pay for? Let's say it had thirty games. How much would you pay for a Game Boy Classic? Fifty bucks. I can't even think of thirty games on Game Boy Classic. <laughs> That's uh, I, yeah, I want. There was this game called, uh, gosh, it was called like Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle, something like that. And this was one of my first jams. Um, me and my best friend Jono played this on the playground, uh, and somehow back in this day, the teachers just let us have a Game Boy at recess. Not sure. I don't think that would fly anymore. Well, now uh, I think it's fine. You think so? At recess? Okay, at recess, I guess, yeah. yeah. But Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle was a very intense game, and it had like a hundred little levels or something like that, and we would always try to get to the end, and it was just, it was a great example of sharing his carrying because we didn't like fight over who got to play. We just took turns every level. Every single level. That was Every single one. You beat so the game. nice of you. Uh, we didn't ever beat it. All right, so Bugs Bunny is too dastardly. Uh, just, just for some context here, Jake says he couldn't name uh, 30 Game Boy games. There is 1,049 games released for the Game Boy. So there's a lot to choose from. I mean, there's some good Zeldas. Obviously, like Pokemon Red, Pokemon Blue. Uh, throw in, like, the Super Mario Land, maybe? Throw in... you could Hey, you could throw in freaking Metroid 2. Yeah. Get a little nostalgia for the, Wait, the is, upcoming 3DS game. Wait, was Metroid 2 on, on Game Boy? I don't remember. I don't know these mm-hmm. things. Okay. That's that's where the remake is coming from. Remember, they're turning Return of Samus into Samus Returns. Well, you can have Donkey Kong, uh, Donkey Kong Land, Donkey Kong Land Two or Three. You know, you got some Donkey Kong games in there. Uh, it's like you have Wario, Wario Land. Yes, Double Dragon, Ducktales. Ducktales is really good. Uh, but yeah, th- th- there's a bunch of games. I-, I feel like a Game Boy Classic would be good just for nostalgic sake. And like a lot of the people that owned a Game Boy back then, like they're like parents now, and they're like, oh, k- here, kid, here, son, here, daughter, here person um this is what i played with when i was a kid you 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 can play about these fancy graphics now and 720p not being enough well look at this and then you show i would love to have like yeah a shelf of that just for my future offspring so that i can yeah my future children so that i could be like hey this is what gaming was like when i was small and, and now we just play holographic chess but back then we had all these i don't know i think i think a handheld classic Maybe a good next direction. Last week we talked about the N sixty four classic. A lot of love for that. Uh, I think a Game Boy classic would be. What did they just? What did they just call it? The Game Boy, and they put stuff from the Game Boy, the the Advance, and and the Advance SP. Too many games. Well, you know, you make it like fifty games or something. I don't know. I I saw a lot of people actually comment that they would love to see like 
collections on a cartridge for Switch. And obviously, given the NES Classic and the SNES Classic and the the subscription service, they're not going to do that. But I do think that would be for me even a better play yeah. like i would love to have just a cartridge like you know like nintendo game boy classics like you know a 39.99 cartridge that had yeah. you know that would be super cool but anyhow anything to keep us away from that pesky virtual console that nobody wants right <laughs> <laughs> that, that is seemingly just taboo when it comes to nintendo anyhow jake take us forward all right so juven woe says i'm okay with no lives in mario i have two kids and time is valuable i would rather play without worrying about lives and stuff like that plus it makes it more accessible for my kids win-win it's a very big how, how do we feel about this well I, I i feel like the game's still gonna be hard and like lives have always been like been arbitrary right like they, they don't like matter at a certain point you just collect so many that you're not ever in danger of like losing them all like how many times have you like seriously gotten game overs in, in Mario? Well, I will say, I will, I will say, I was playing Crash Bandicoot, part of the Insane trilogy, and there, like, it became apparent to me how lives have really phased out because then it was important. You would get game overs, and it was like, okay, I, I have zero lives left, so I am going to go for extra apples to build up my, you know, my extra lives. I am going to go for this extra crate that has an extra life in it. Like that was important, and so. It is sort of a different style taking it out. But yeah, I don't think that this speaks to the level of difficulty of the game. I think it just eliminates the reload and the, the game over. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I have got game overs in Mario games before. Like, I'm not saying I'm just like Mario God because I'm not. But, like, at the end of the day, like, it doesn't, like, matter. And now there's, like, checkpoints. I mean, we, we've seen them in the trailers. Like, there's, like, these little checkpoints that you get. And, like, since the kingdoms are, like, so big, apparently, like, I don't. I don't see the need for lies. I I don't mind it. So so just to answer your question, how, you know, how do we feel about this? I don't mind it. I I think it'll still be good. Well, and they were talking about in some of the Trias lives that like it, they want to encourage more exploration and stuff. Like it, they showed in the Wooded Kingdom, um, that you have to jump off the edge of the main area in order to get to the deep woods. So if you had like lives and game over and stuff, people would play much more cautiously. But because there is more freedom there, people they want people to try things that they wouldn't normally try in a Mario game to discover new areas and, and new moons and things like that. That's another. That's good a point. good point. Yeah, I like that. He, uh, he Ray says, "Look, guys, I'm talking in bold italics. Please give me likes. I hope we- he got a like." We have, a, we have a battle, or we had a battle brewing all week, and, you know, the fourth edge versus Gabe was a clash for the ages, but now there's this new clash between bold and non-bold comments, and I think it's very interesting how this has just really risen up to become the number one conflict. I expect it to be picked up by CNN any day now. Yeah, but uh, well, they like covering things that, you know, like this, yes. It, it's, it's, it's very interesting, and uh, I just want to let everyone know that when I read the comments, whether they're bold or not bold, has no effect on me. We so do, feel we, free to like we read mix it all up if the you comments. Want. Like every yeah. Well, yeah, it doesn't matter if it's bold or not. We read it. Um, the, 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 yeah. Uh, our official statement on this issue is that we are welcoming of both bold, non-bold, italic, non-italic. All kinds of comments are welcome here at Switch Force. Non-binary, bi- non-binary comments allowed. Wait, binary, yes, so. binary zeros and ones get it because we're on the internet. You get that? Yeah, you're you're a smart boy. Gabe, Gabe, coming in with those sick tech memes. Yeah. But yeah, it was interesting <laughs> to see so many people were like bold italics, and you know Ouija was kind of the brunt of this because Ouija likes to comment in in bold. But as you'll notice, there is no Ouija comment in this comment for so bold clearly doesn't give you a win all the time. Yeah. But wait, 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 wait. Let's have a division. If you're in the fourth edge, comment in bold. If you are against the fourth (laughs) edge, like I am, comment regularly. Oh, geez. That's going to have a lot of bold comments, Gabe. (laughs) Nope. (laughs) No, but we love all you, whether you're bold or not bold. We love you. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. Nin Daniel comes in with just a nice little thing here. He says, I subbed you guys when you had 3,000 subs, and I've been with you all since. And let me just say, I'm so happy how much this channel has grown. Please keep up the amazing work for all of us Switch Foresters. Well, thank you, Nin Daniel. We are very grateful for you and everybody else, and we are still cooking up that 100k special, so stay tuned. Actually, I have a, a little update for you guys that I'll tell you off the air on that. But anyhow, um, yes, thank you, Daniel. That was a really nice thing. <laughs> you're, Zach, you're such a tease. I'm, you're such I'm a, a very, tease, Zach. Stop must teasing sneak. me. I'm going to sneak into your DMs, Gabe, with a bold comment. Oh, okay. Please don't do that. Okay, Gabe, if you were – okay, let's picture this. Gabe, you're like 16. All right. And (laughs) you're single, and you have just a ton of DMs. You're just like this hot stuff guy on campus. (laughs) Are you going to click on the bold DM first? (laughs) No. 
No. Okay. That, so see, it, it see, doesn't even work here's for how, here, Here's how my psyche works. I'm like, no, this person wants too much attention. That means mm. that they're overcompensating for something that they're lacking because they feel like they got to be better than everybody else with the, with, the, with the bold. No, 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 no. That's not what we're doing. So now now we want you to write in all lowercase yeah. to show that you just you got a big personality and, and big love yeah. and you just need small letters. Yeah. Or it could Jake. just be, be proper grammar. Treble Plays <laughs> says... Uh, I think you forgot a very important character for Bowser's best man, Kamek. Then hopefully he is in Odyssey because we haven't seen him for a bit. I think that Kamek may have just moved on. I think he might have gotten sick of Bowser's plans never working. He's like, I- I'm this Koopa who's been blessed with the- these magic abilities, this magic wand. I can make shapes appear out of thin air and throw them at people. And he was like, no, this Bowser guy, he doesn't know what he's doing. He keeps trying to capture the princess. He keeps losing. He keeps getting foiled by Mario. I'm out of here. I'm taking my magic skills somewhere else. Yeah, and, and those are very pretty sparkly like things that he like throws your way. So maybe he went into the fireworks business. Maybe I think he'd be very successful there. Right. I think the real answer is we're getting a new mobile game called Kamex Magic Surprise, and you match the triangle, the circle, and the square because those are his shapes, and it's a match three. Okay. No. That's what's happening. I don't, I don't like that. I do miss Kamek. He's one of my favorite characters in all of Nintendo. Character. <laughs> Kamek is amazing. I'm, I'm sure he is. I don't. I don't mind. He Kam- was. I don't mind him. He was putting on a little weight in, in Mario 3D World. Yeah. So maybe, maybe he's not going on like a. Maybe he's going to appear in a sports game next. Speaking of putting on a little bit of weight, we have a bold comment again <laughs> uh just because the, the font it's bigger eh, whatever omega fire says yes double pack the hell out of it and double pack wind waker and twilight princess they are so referencing about... bayonetta here yeah 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 so i wanted to ask you guys what double pack would you like to see most on the switch could be any era you know he's talking about he'd love a wind waker twilight princess double pack because those are hd ports that were released on wii u can you think of any games or any pair that you would like as a double pack on switch uh, Mario Galaxy would be a good one. I feel Ooh, like that is a great one. Uh, Tropical Freeze uh, and um, a DK double pack. Yeah, the, the, you, you you know how they always have like the they had like what are they called like Player's Choice or they have different you know special like lines. I think Switch double packs would be an amazing line where they take Wii U games or even Wii games or something and like yeah Bayonetta one and two, Donkey Kong Returns and Tropical Freeze, Mario Galaxy one and two. Like that would be an incredible series. I, I, yeah, that that actually sounds like a really good idea. Um, yeah, and then you could also do the the, the Twilight Princess and Wind Waker one. Uh, um, this is more of a triple pack, but you can get all three Metroid games in there. Or um, Pikmin. Yeah, uh, Pikmin. Yes, uh, that one, that one's good. Ooh, you get Hey Pikmin and Pikmin Three. <laughs> <laughs> hey Pikmin Switch Port. Yeah. What what else? I'm trying to think. Wii U wise. Uh, Splatoon 1 and 2 double pack. It's just like a little bit more money. But what's the point of giving you Splatoon 1 if you have Splatoon 2? Yeah. The single player, I guess. No. Mm-hmm. I don't think it works for that one, like, necessarily. Mario Kart Wii, Mario Kart Wii U double pack. Smash Brothers Wii E, Smash Brothers Wii U double pack. I think I think we're, we're, like, as good as it gets is, like, Galaxy and Donkey Kong, really. Yeah, those are the two best ones. But I, I do think, like, if Bayonetta 1 and 2 came out, I would hope that it would start this, like, unique trend of double packs yeah, I, I, a mario <laughs> maker captain toad puzzle double pack there you go mm. that'd, that'd be cool i'm all about that uh pops player says yeah i was surprised how many games the 32 gigs on the switch is giving us this week we heard the download sizes for both Splatoon 2 and mario plus rabbits and they're both pretty condensed um he says i've been downloading a few games on the switch even though i do play a lot of physical and i just downloaded snake pass i was worried i basically took up all my space i looked there were still 13 gigs left i am impressed i'm, I'm sorry you bought snake pass <laughs> I, I, I don't actually even pretty mind glorious. Sn- I don't even mind Snake Pass. I just like this narrative that I hate it. I don't. It's just funny. <laughs> yeah, but we, we were talking about how it is impressive that initially the storage capacity was a big like point of contention, and it Nintendo is kind of a race outside of Breath of the Wild. They've really kept their games file size small, and so you know if you add in arms and and splatoon 2 and mario plus rabbits like you still have a bunch of space like this guy said yeah i mean i have an extra memory card or sd card and i haven't even need to use it yet i've just been using my switch storage pretty nice yep so on to hylian force who says we here who here sorry who here is getting splatoon 2 because they skipped splatoon on wii u basically me yeah i didn't play splatoon on I played it a little bit, like very, very little, but 
Uh, yeah, I, that's why I'm so excited for Splatoon 2. Uh, I, I don't like that Zach is like way better at the game than I am, but other than that, I'm really excited for it. Yeah, I think it's a lot of people, you know, and I wonder if I wonder if we did like some sort of math equation, if we could figure out if more people, more Nintendo fans skip Splatoon and will buy Splatoon 2, or if more Nintendo fans skip Mario Kart 8 and bought Mario Kart 8 well, Deluxe. Mario Kart 8 probably sold more than Splatoon, didn't it? Like on Wii U? Yeah, yeah, for sure, but I just wonder like, because because that's not that's not a, it's not fair to directly compare them. It have to be like a it have to be like a some sort of you know percentage or something. But it, it is interesting, and I do wonder if Splatoon two is going to see huge sales, kind of like Mario Kart eight Deluxe did, because of this you know people skipping. I mean, this is a new game, so it's not a one to one thing. But if people skipped it and were like interested and saw how popular Splatoon one became, if Splatoon two is going to see a a mega boost because it's like capturing new people plus people that are aware. Uh, but didn't get it last time, plus fans of the franchise like myself, I, I think it could... Uh, I, to me, this is the most exciting game since Breath of the Wild. I hope it does well, and to, to me, the most exciting game since Breath of the Wild is uh, Mario Rabbids. Um, well, that's not out yet. Oh, you mean that's out? Well, neither Splatoon. Well, between now and Splatoon. Well, okay, sure. Or, but Sorry, between Breath of the Wild and Splatoon, this is the most exciting game. Well, yeah, if you just want to count out the next month. <laughs> no, I'm saying, like... You had Mario Kart 8, you had ARMS, you had LEGO City, you had Snake Pass, you I had... I love ARMS, and there's there, there's been, like, rumblings of it, like, uh, underperforming a tiny bit. Like, not by a lot, but um, Andrew, something fr from uh, Game Informer, what's his name? No, I'm, I'm blanking out. Doesn't matter. Uh, someone from Game Informer, like, tweeted out that they talked to, like, their um, uh, retail, like, sources, and, and th they were talking about, like, how games are performing, and they're saying that ARMS is, like, underperforming a little bit, so... Uh, that makes me hmm. a little bit sad, if true. I want to see ARMS numbers. Like, if, like I, I play online still now. Like, I played yesterday, and I constantly just easily find matches. Like, so there's, yeah. there's still, like, a bunch of people playing. It's just, yeah, I don't know what the numbers are on there. But, yeah, Splatoon 2, yeah. very, very exciting. Uh, Taco Baby 91 though, says, It would be nice if Nintendo actually focused on story. Like, what if Peach is uh, bet betrothed? Is that the word? Betrothed. betrothed. I don't know if I've ever heard that word uh, to Bowser and had to marry him for her kingdom. I know what it means because of context clues. Uh, that's why that's why her amiibo looks conflicted slash confused. She has to make a decision between her people or her heart. Gosh, you're getting too deep here, Taco Baby. Who be, who betrothed her? Someone ha would have to like give her up. It's the, the the toads of the kingdom. They said, you know what, M the mushroom kingdom is gonna get eaten by Bowser's uh, brutals, so we're gonna just give Peach up. I yeah. knew I knew that that these toads were, were bad news. I knew this, and now if this is true, it, it all but reaffirms my, my my suspicions. I would love a deeper story Mario game. I know it would go against everything that kind of Mario has been, but I think it would be really awesome to get like. You know, you know, in the way that the Mario and Luigi games kind of capitalized on sort of the the humor and the fun of the Mario universe, I, I wish that the mainline game would do a smidgen more because I think that would open up the potential for more guest appearances. Uh, and you know, they, they're doing it with Paulina, so who knows? Maybe we will see uh, Captain Toad. Well, Captain Toad is in there, so maybe we'll see Wario, Waluigi. Maybe we'll see Mauser. I just, I, I really want Wart and Mauser to come back as a tag team duo. Can we get a Mauser and Wart double pack? No. Oh. <laughs> okay. But I, I do like story. Uh, JGC Jr. says, I've been here since the fourth edge started, and I still don't know what it is. <laughs> Can you explain <laughs> to your people? <laughs> Could, no one knows what it is because it's not a real thing. So, yeah. It is it is so real. And this is – JGC, you are just a clever man. JGC is one of our officers, and he is trying to uh, falsely spread – that the fourth edge is mysterious in order to build up its uh, intrigue. So mm -hmm. thank you, JGC, for accomplishing your mission of the week. Yeah. <laughs> mission of the week. You have weekly missions that you send out? <laughs> Every week it comes on a little sandwich bag. Yeah, the fourth edge is basically like a real-life Destiny like game. I have bought out the Ziploc Corporation, and I send my messages on Ziploc bags, and I fill them with a Lunchable. We should make oh. a giant ARG that's just all like fourth edge related. Okay. Maybe maybe this channel is part of it. All right, it's, on not, to... it's not really about the switch. It's about the ARG, <laughs> and we're gonna geocache to find my time capsule I made in fourth grade. L listen to Rabbits the podcast if you like ARGs. All right, on to Carp Entertainment. You know what? I hope this means. I hope this means that this is a new Mario game that will finally be difficult. 
could use bold there. Maybe the fact that there are no <laughs> game oh, game overs will mean that Nintendo is trying to be nice to us because they know how difficult it is going to be. Wouldn't that be awesome? I've been waiting for a difficult Mario game for so long. There's been difficult Mario games. What are you talking about? Not for Carp Entertainment. He's a Mario genius. I think he wants to go back to the era of Sunshine and the special levels and blue coin hunting. Sunshine was very difficult and sometimes. There was some platforming there with a flood that was just insane. Or like Yoshi would have to jump, hover in the air, spit his juice on an enemy, turn that enemy into a platform, and then somehow land on top of it and keep doing that to get higher and up, higher, higher in the sky. And it was very difficult, but I like that challenge. Speaking of Yoshi, do we think he's an Odyssey? Yes. At some point, yes. Yeah. There is there is a part of, near the Metro Kingdom that looks like Yoshi head, so it could be Yoshi Lake Kingdom, but I highly highly doubt it. <laughs> yeah, but um, we we we've um some of the stuff in Galaxy was difficult. Like, mm. I mean the like the extra worlds Galaxy in three D world, the extra worlds in three D world had some challenge to them. I mean the last level is notoriously known as being very tricky. I think it's just like the main game and. Yeah, I think that was one of our biggest fears at E3, but it's been assuaged with the new knowledge that there's tons of kingdoms, and hopefully, you know, they, they are as expansive as what we've already seen. And if so, then there can be deeper challenges lying uh, farther off the beaten trail. Speaking of farther Just off the beaten see. trail, not really. Caleb M says, Salmon Run isn't uh, hour-long sl- uh, slots like you mentioned. It's actually in 24-hour time slots, but it still sucks that they skip entire days when we want to play it. Also, hashtag Team Ice Cream. Yes! Hashtag Team Arena. Yes! Caleb M., you are a rock star. Um, Just a little bit of a correction here. Uh, I guess Salmon Run is doing day time slots rather than, like, hourly time slots. But it's not going to be available every day. So it doesn't make sense why it's not available every day. I already told... Well, you weren't here, but I told Zach it's because Nintendo wants to dictate everything we do and when we do it. Like, (laughs) So they're the real controllers of the fourth edge. (laughs) We're all pawns <laughs> yeah. in their grand scheme. Well, yeah, because, you know, they're doing the, 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 the demo for the Splatfest next week, and it's only for those four hours. And when they do t- um, global test punches, it's only for those, like, two hours or one hour. Yeah, but those are the, the demos. This is oh, the actual and... game. No, I know. But, yes, and, and for Splatoon, they're, like, doing all this, like, oh, you have to do this at this hour because that's when everybody else is going to be doing it. Um, I'm, I don't support that. But, yes, I do support hashtag Team Ice Cream. It's basically a built-in parental control. Like, hey, you're not going to play Salmon Run every day. It's a really great mode that we know you're going to love, so you don't get to play it all the time. It's very weird to me still. Yeah. RetroGen says, I actually love the idea of this uh, Nintendo Switch Online app because it has all of your Switch things on your smartphone. It's actually better than having a headset because almost everyone always brings their phones with them, so you don't want to have to take a huge headset too. Now, I thought this was interesting because it made me reevaluate the Switch Online and I thought about it from much more of a mobile sense. And I thought about it from the Nintendo commercials. They truly envision the Switch as much more of a portable mobile platform that has multiplayer occurring in unforeseen locations. <laughs> so when you think of it from that frame of mind, it, it begins to make a little more sense, you know, that, that the app would not be... I mean, it still doesn't make a whole lot of sense why it's not just directly on the Switch, but... Set that aside. I I do kind of get what Retrogen is saying here about like you always have your phone, you always have your Switch. Kind of has more of that like Japanese, you know, the the PSP slash 3DS DS thought process to it. Just put it on your Switch. Yeah, everyone has their phone, but if you're gonna play multiplayer on Switch, you have your Switch too. So yeah, um, and then, that that would be the easy and, option. And, and but, then you don't yeah. have to put like two headsets in, like because if you want to like chat, you have like your headset on your phone, and then what about game audio? Like. Mm. I mean, and I know, I know there's like ways around it with like secondary wires and stuff, but it's not something I'm behind. I, I still don't approve. Yeah, I mean, there has to be some thinking. I mean, Nintendo's not completely dumb. I, there has to be some reason either now or later on that that we'll see once we get hands on with it. Because I, I, I don't want to believe that Nintendo was just like, oh, we totally forgot that we could put it on the Switch. That was such a good <laughs> idea, missed opportunity. Darn it! Like, yeah. there has to be some Yeah, yeah. there's reason. a reason. I just, I don't know that they couldn't work around that reason. I don't know, yeah, but it... the chip monkey is ready for his Interesting. showcase. I totally agree with this. The chip monkey says Pearl is demonic looking. And the thing that creeps me out the most about Pearl is the fact that she has no teeth. She looks like an adult baby and it scares the crap out of me. Yeah, I, I don't like Pearl. Pearl is very weird. I, I feel like, like they, 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 they mucked up so much because... Marina's really cool looking. She's an octopi, and she's got green and, like, whatever. And then Pearl just looks like a creepy baby. 
Yeah. Listen. Per- Pearl, no, Pearl, bye. You bye, guys Pearl. are haters, and we got a comment uh, coming up later that explains why this hating is an issue, but I think Pearl is pretty cool. I like her crown. I will say I like her thorny crown, but I don't know. I feel like Marina is just way cooler. Looking. I feel like Kelly and Marie were more more equal opponents and like we're, we're more on par with each other and i feel like pearl and marina are a little bit off balance yeah well, well they're a band they're I, not opponents necessarily so well but i mean like like for Splatfest or like having yeah a team, and, like and that's what the co- that's what the comment gets at later and okay. so we'll we can discuss that then all right so purple baller deluxe says splatoon 2 is a true sequel five new weapons and a bunch of modified past weapons three new stages and improved past stages single player only mechanics found in multiplayer uh, sponges and ink rails uh, new sub weapons all new specials improved all the modes salmon run play with friends and splatfest splatnet 2 completely new single player campaign new mini game new gear upgrade system new classes and new gear new gear abilities and the ability to choose which ability you have a uh, new weapon class defensive weapons and blasters new plaza all this culminates into an incredible sequel to an, an already amazing game there is a lot of new stuff in Splatoon 2. I agree. Yeah, I think the direct yesterday kind of cemented that this really is a sequel. I know some people feel like because it looks similar and because the multiplayer has the same modes, but you know, just because Call of Duty is team death match every year, it's still a sequel. And just because NBA has, you know, head to head every year doesn't mean it's it's not a sequel, not a new game. And I think that they have it's a whole new single player. As you can see here, I'm not sure of the exact numbers, but they have brought in new weaponry. They brought in new levels. They brought in new systems and they brought in new characters, new look, new feel. I think it is a fantastic sequel. Um, and I think purple baller summed up all the reasons why very nicely. Yep. I agree. Uh, Wolfgang 360 says team Marina all the way. And this is a, a, a trend, a dangerous trend. No, it's a good, and trend. it's a great trend. Everyone is picking Marina, and there is not much love for Pearl. And I'm I'm worried about the balance. And I'm not. It's 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 the next like three or four comments are about that. So continue <laughs> us, Jake. Next one. It's funny time. YouTube. Everybody is choosing ice cream. So it may be like pirates versus ninjas, where there were too many ninjas that that they didn't find pirate players. So pirates won. So cake for the win. Yeah, winning by, like, by default over an asterisk isn't actually winning. Spoilers. That's like a participation trophy. The thing I love about Splatfest is that it is a mixture of the percentage of people that pick combined with the percentage of wins that that team has. So in theory, it is possible to have a less percentage of popularity but a greater percentage of wins and take the crown. And I think that is what Cake is going to do this week. Splatfest, Next week. Splatfest are so cool. I, I, like, I love the concept of them. Me too. Samurai, He's- who is a dog... Says, uh, Gabe only... I thought I wasn't in this one. Uh, Gabe only likes the Splatbrella because it reminds him of Twintel. <laughs> it's curly like her hair. It's yeah. spirally like her. No, she yeah. has a She has, she has umbrellas. the umbrellas. Yeah, the arms. That too. She starts yeah. with the parasols. Yeah. That that one as well. That's the main I saw one. A lot of, I saw a lot of Marina comparing com- comparisons with Twintel. Well, Twintel is bae, as we know, so. To you. I... Gabe, someone also confirmed that uh, you can use your Splatbrella pacifism strategy the entire match if you want. <laughs> yes. Never kill in Splatoon. Hashtag all lives matter. Gabe is basically the Splatoon maid. He doesn't want ink anywhere. <laughs> He's going to block that ink and keep the world clean. Wait, I want to take that back. I don't want to actually be hashtag all lives matter. That was just a joke about Splatoon. Don't take that seriously, guys. All right. This is me, I guess. Raging Red R says, hashtag team ice cream. Then shift word tentacles says, same. Then Cameron says, agreed. Then it's your boy says, team ice cream. Then Icky Sticky says, I'm here, ice cream. Then freaking Booba says, team ice cream. What is with this ice cream for everyone? I didn't see hardly anyone Dude, I give told cake you. love. D- D- listen, I don't know how you felt. Back? I yes, am absolutely he team is, cake. and I don't understand Uh-oh. why. Like, it makes no logical sense. Cake is horrible. Cake is so good. Depends on the type of cake. Coffee, coffee cake is really good. Sure, sure, coffee but it doesn't... Cake is great. Like, vanilla Regular ice cake. cream is better than the best cake you can ever oh, buy. I'm telling vanilla you, ice cream, I hate vanilla ice cream. Plain old ice cream oh, is basically God. just like ice with a little it's bit of sugar, the and room. then it's melted. Yeah, but cake is just like... <laughs> 
bread mixed with sugar, and then it's cake just... is fluffy, and it could have oh toppings, and it could have. Goodness. It well, might have a celebration you, you associated you, with you it. It might be your I, birthday. You can't put to- toppings on ice cream. You can't have ice cream on your birthday. No, these points are mute. Let's move on. <laughs> Jake, I want I want to have somebody make fan art of you guys arguing over cake and ice cream. It's Listen, all, it's all in good stuff and fun. L- here is how I can explain to you that cake is better than ice cream. Ready? On a hot, squiddy day, ice cream will melt into nothing, and cake will still be there for after the turf war. Why, why are you going to stare at the ice cream for so long? Just eat it. No, because, yeah, that's fine. Take your splatbrella, fill it with ice cream, and just walk around the stage dripping it into your big old mouth. Jake, next. All right, Don Soro, Sara, Surat says, We all know it's going to be more about the team leader than the actual topic more so now with who the actual team leaders are this time around marina is by far the most popular from what i've seen online and it's easy to see why pearl has an off-putting evil gremlin thing going on while marina has the shy and sexy vibe for her go- going for her the, the, this is what I'm saying. she's a creepy baby there... doll with no teeth if she grew teeth she'd be so much better dude there's she a gift of a marina wiggle going around that i saw marina's is this where it's at she just i don't like teeth. that Marina represents ice cream. I, I I feel like this is part of the reason that cake is suffering so much. No, yeah, for sure. Cake... I would. I'm totally picking it based on the the color and leader. I'm not. I'm picking it based off like, you know, the, the... dude. Literally, if I saw Pearl walking down the street, I would scream and run the other direction. Mm. Yeah. I feel like we need to start a Pearl Appreciation Club and a Cake Appreciation Club, and also I really hope that they find a way to. If this is a thing, I hope they find a way to negate this effect so that it's not just Marina's team winning the percentage like 80 to 20 every time. I'm very curious to see what the, the actual percentage for this ends up being. Yeah. It's a very simple fix. Just give Pearl teeth. <laughs> Hashtag please Pearl teeth. Pearl teeth please. Uh, flying BP123. Oh, look. Wait. Is this the same guy with the cat snoring? Because he has the cat on his shoulders. I think so. All right. You know what you guys should do since there are... Uh, four players in Splatfest and only three of you. You guys should do some type of giveaway to let one of us, Fourth Edge, join your Splatfest team. That would be really cool. Or well, we could be just cool. let I our think... dog do it. Nope. I think for the str- <laughs> or, or it's Peter Bald, uh, I think that for the streams, yeah, we should have someone for like either League Battle or Splatfest join in with us, and then we can rant at them and encourage them to use the umbrella baller uh, combo. Th- does that mean that they get to be on Discord with us? We'll have to see. To communicate? Yeah, that'd be Probably. Cool. All right. Uh, let's see. Silver Wind says, You missed the part in the Splatoon 2 Direct where the new Urchin character seems to let you simply choose which abilities you want on your gear. Easily the biggest new feature improvement the game could make. No longer relying on random gear abilities makes me happier than anything else they announced, though the rest is still pretty sweet too. And I think this is a good uh, little nuance to pick out, that before you would roll uh, for your your abilities and now it seems like you are selecting them giving you more control over your loadouts and more tactical uh finesse for how you approach each match that is a good upgrade or a new feature yeah i like that a lot since i never like played splatoon like it's gonna be weird that i never like had to go through that very much because I, I you know i played it with you with you is the only time i ever played the original splatoon so and you know i think i think gabe we're gonna lock you in a sell and we're going to force you to, to go through the rolling and we're just going to collect your tears and then feed them to all of the fourth edge sounds good all right insta smile says hey my husband and i are celebrating 10 years together tomorrow five of which have we've been married can you give him a shout out his name is eli and we love your videos hi eli happy five to ten year anniversary i don't know which one you're going off of i guess I, 10 years yeah Ha, ha, yes, th- that that's commendable, and any any couple being together for ten years that that's something special. Congrats to you for ten years, and I will be metaphorically sending you ten toads to prop up your achievement and shower you in peaches baked goods. You know what they say: the eleventh year of marriage is the best year. You know what they also say? Well, Gabe, that's in six more years for them. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know, Gabe. You know what they also say? What else do they say? They say that marriage is the quickest way to uh, find uh, uh, f- find your your name. <laughs> Stitch three hundred two. 
Says, Gabe, I want to know your name. <laughs> I didn't know. I, ha- I has been Gabe, but that's my name. name has... new, new name reveal once Gabe gets married. Yeah. Deal? <laughs> At your wedding, I'm going to be there, and I'm going to shout out. I'm going to bring a microphone, and I'm going to – when they ask if anyone has any objections, I'm going to say, this is not his name. It's has been Gabe. Reveal your true self <laughs> now, and Gabe's going to pull off his mask, and he's going to be Andre from Game Explain. <laughs> That's funny. Stitch 302 says, um, last comment of the day. It says, I am 109.2% uh, annoyed uh, on the 14th through 17th. I'm going on holiday to a caravan with no Wi-Fi or electricity, so I can't play the early Splatfest. Oh, that's terrible. I am so excited for that, by the way. this uh, No, stop saying that. Stop. You're just rubbing it in. This, this guy is going to a holiday in a caravan with no electricity basically living in the old country while you get to play this newfangled switch device well look and you're fine, bragging fine, about fine. it fine solidarity is what you want solidarity is what you'll get we are having a switch force retreat we are going to the woods somewhere with no internet and uh, no electricity and we will just have a powwow um, over yes in order stitch in order to make you feel better we are shutting down the splatfest and there will be no splatfest on july 15th we're going to call up Marina and Pearl and tell them it's over. Forget about cake. Forget about ice cream. Forget about Splatoon. Well, this is not fair. We're going to tell Pearl it's over, right? Just so she doesn't come. But Marina- Can we get up? Okay, fine. I don't even like Pearl that much. Can we get a trade? Can we trade Pearl for someone new? Can we like get a re-roll on that? If they're not going to roll the abilities, can we re-roll we can- Pearl? Yeah, just re-roll Pearl. I'm with that. Pearl is just creepy. I don't like Pearl. I think that I feel like for the balance of the Splatfest going forward... We need to re-roll Pearl. Okay, everyone, tweet at Nintendo of America. Re-roll Pearl. At Nintendo of America, re-roll Pearl. <laughs> and let's get a movement started here. She just needs teeth, and, bro. And either hashtag Pearl needs teeth or Pearl teeth, please. Re-roll Pearl. We need to get this message out there. I think this we might have to so make a dedicated all the time. We might have to make a dedicated video about re-roll Pearl. So thank you, thank you, Stitch, for bringing this to our attention. I don't know. What we would do without you, and I am so sorry about the 14th through 17th. The good news is when you get back, you will probably be rejuvenated and have the power of 10,000 small whales ready to play Splatoon 2 and spread ink like never before. Gosh. So, in the meantime, friends, family, 4th Edge, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for being a part of us this week. Uh, We really appreciate everything. And we're looking forward to another good week. There's a lot of indie games that came out last week. We got a big co-op title, or I guess competitive, Death Squared coming out. Oh, uh, man. Which, that, that one is going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait which to should see. should be fun. I can't wait to see your videos on that with, with you and Jake playing, like, local. That'll be yeah, so that'll good. be that's going to be really cool. Um, and then Splatoon 2 is actually right around the corner. But we also have Splatfest. And Stitch, close your ears. We are still streaming the Splatfest on July 15th. So if you're not in a caravan... You can watch. And with that, that's Common Force 21, everybody. Thanks so much for a fantastic week. We love you all for myself. Jake has been Gabe, whoever he may be, hiding under this mask from the future. Switch Force out.